Today's activity is called Exploding Numbers. We're using simple things like stickers, paint, and other manipulatives to teach your child early math concepts. Manipulatives are simply something that children can use with their hands. It really builds those fine motor skills and allows them to really bring the mind and the body together. I'm gonna to show you how to make this a fun, simple math activity for your children. Silas, today we're gonna to do something called exploding numbers. We're gonna use paint, we're gonna use pom-poms. You ready? Yeah, it's gonna be fun. I'm excited. I'm excited too. Mm -hmm. This is a really simple craft that you probably already have all the materials on hand for. We get to do numbers. You like numbers, don't you? Wait, what? zero, yeah. one, two, three again? You're right, zero, one, two, and three. This is how we created our exploding numbers. First, we took a piece of paper and we just printed out some numbers on it. I cut them out so that Silas could attach them to a page. All right, so take your glue. I know. Oh, you know, huh? You're so smart. All right, put the glue all over that. Stick it anywhere you want on the page. You can add something like stickers. Simply ask them how many dots go along with each number. Now we're gonna put stickers. Stickles by the number. That's right, you need how many right here? One. And then? Lots of boys. Right here. Two. There you go. Okay. No, six. Six? What, what color do you want for six? This craft is a really great way to teach number sequencing as children get to recognize numbers and also how they flow in order. It also teaches subitizing, which is the recognition of looking at numbers in a set. So when they look at three stickers, they recognize immediately that there's three there. How many bright pinks do you have? Four. Let's count them. Four. Right, three. And how Four. many purples? Four. So how many purple and pink all together are there? How many do you have? Can I count all of them? Let's count just the pink and purple, and then you can count all of them if you want. One, two, three, four, five, six. You're right, six. And then this is where your little one can really get their creative juices flowing. Put some paint simply on a plate for them, and then they can go to town. They can smear, they can blot, whatever they want to do to create their exploding numbers. Okay, you can paint. And you can either dab it on, or you can make streaks, whatever. You can experiment and do what you want. See on the outside, they painted all around the outside of the number. And if you paint the dot too, the dot will show up too. Ooh, I like that, Silas. What color do you want to add to it? Wait, I need a hmm. couple. I can use... mix them. You can mix it if you want. You can experiment. Yeah. Just like they had orange and yellow. There you go. Ooh, I like that, Silas. Very creative. What? Oh, yeah. Can I do number six? Wait, can I make some? Sure. They could even use these pom-poms if they wanted to, to paint with. Then, you simply peel off the numbers. Go from this side. And you have a beautiful piece of artwork. Look at your exploding numbers! Do ah. you like it? Yeah. <laughs> Silas, you could see the little light bulbs going off in his head as he looked at the stickers and could count all the objects. Or when he saw the colors in the paint, he would go around and say, this color is this, and this is this color. Boil, mm -hmm. boil, this is the hot. Hmm, what does it look Wait, like? Wait, yellow and orange mix. It does look like a mix. He also started adding all the things together on the plate. He really had a lot of fun doing it. You can also take some pom-poms, which are really fun. Fun for little fingers to hold these and use those little fine motor skills. Have them put on the page, corresponding with each number. This is also a great way to teach your little one how to do some simple addition. See your squishy pom-poms over here? Yeah. Okay, how many pom-poms equal the number zero? Would you use any pom-poms? No, zero. Because it's nothing, right? Okay, so how many do we need for this number? One! All right, find a pom-pom. Oranges! Oh, you can use orange. How many do you have? Two. Two. And what number are you going to put them by? Two. Two. Good job. Ooh, very creative on each side of the number. Using manipulatives is a great way for children to connect the brain to the body. It's something that they can visualize so that they don't have to just think in their head about what you're speaking about, but they can actually see it as well. You can count it. Twelve. I think 
of it in my head. <laughs> Silas obviously had so much fun doing this activity. He especially loved painting as he got to choose what colors he got to paint on the numbers. So grab some paint, paper, and have fun with your child exploring numbers. Yay, look, look here, Silas. Cheese! Cheese. Hi, I'm Ivy. I play Baba Sheep on the Mother Goose Club. I love doing arts and crafts, especially with the kids I babysit for, like Lucas. Hi. In this video, we're going to show you how to make a bus out of a cardboard box. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna turn this cardboard box into a bus that we can ride in. Then we can pretend to drive all around the neighborhood, picking up all our friends. This is a super creative craft that you can do at home with your child. And by the end of it, you'll have a toy that your child can use for pretend play. This encourages creativity and imagination. For this craft, you'll need a large empty cardboard box, some white, yellow, and black construction paper, glue, adult scissors, safety scissors, crayons, and four paper plates for the wheels. Okay, let's get this bus rolling. First, we're gonna cut off the bottom flaps. The cardboard's a bit tough to cut, so an adult needs to do this step. Now we're going to fold in the top flaps to make the bus sturdy. To make the windows, we're going to use white paper. We're going to cut ours in half so that it fits better on the box. When you're doing this project at home, make sure that you're letting your child make all kinds of creative decisions. The more they do themselves, the more pride they'll feel when they're done. So how many windows do you think we need on each side? Three. Sounds good. Can I help with the cutting? Sure, here's your scissors. If you feel comfortable letting your child use safety scissors, let them help with the cutting. It exercises the small muscles in their hands and develops fine motor skills. I did it. Awesome, now let's glue these windows on. You almost done? Uh, just my last bit. We're gonna add two pieces of paper to the front to create the windshield. And great. Okay, are you ready to glue on the windows? Uh-huh. Okay, I'm gonna glue on the first one, right here. Look good? Uh-huh. You ready to put it in the middle? Uh-huh. Let's put it right here. Great. Now let's give this bus some headlights. We can fold the piece of paper in half, and I'm gonna draw a circle. And then I'm gonna cut it out. If your child's like Lucas and loves to help, you can have him trace the circles himself. Awesome. Wow, look at that circle. This helps them develop their hand-eye coordination. Almost done. Now let's glue the headlights on. Looks good. Awesome. To make the wipers, we're going to cut two long strips of black paper, like this. Awesome. Hey, which way do the windshield wipers go? That way. Good. Looking good. Awesome. Hey, we did it! This bus looks amazing, Lucas! Great job! But it's missing one thing. What? Well, what helps the bus move? The wheel! That's right! We're going to make them out of paper plates. We can either glue them on, as is, or color them however we want. Let's turn pink. That's a good choice. 
Now that we've glued these awesome wheels, you ready to put them on the bus? Uh-huh. Let's do it. I'll let you glue yours on first. Oh, that looks great. I'll pop mine on. And make sure it sticks. Looks good. Hey, let's take our bus for a spin. Yeah! Come on! The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. Try making a bus at home with your child and let us know how it goes by posting photos or videos and hashtagging them with Mother Goose Club. As always, we love to hear from you. So type in comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Okay, let's get this bus rolling. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Action. Damn it. Sorry. So how many windows do you think we need on each side? Three. Can I help? <laughs> it's my fault because I was like. I went. Oh, okay, stabbing. He knew I messed up. Yeah. It exercises their fine motors. Oh, sorry. It exercises the small motors. Small muscles. It exercises their fine. It, ex it okay. Yeah. The different things. Be nice. <laughs> and develops the fine. Now let's glue these headshot. Oh my God. Black street, street. Black street. I want to wipe your windows. I want to wipe your windows. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Hello. Is anybody home? Yes, come to Hi, I would love to come visit you. What a lovely house you have. Hi, I'm Sarah, and these are my kids, Rachel and Benjamin. Have you ever noticed that kids love to play with cardboard boxes? Well, it turns out that cardboard boxes are not only fun, they're also great for developing brains. I'll show you how. Boxes are great for growing minds and muscles. Just set the box out and let your kids go to town. Their imaginations will take them away. Are we at a restaurant? Yes, we are at a restaurant. Yes, mommy, so you can take mommy's mommy, order. Mommy, what do you want to eat? Mommy, I would like to mommy, eat a hamburger no, no, and some fries, on, please. Boxes offer more than fun. For one, they're comforting. The space inside makes kids feel safe, kind of like how babies like to be wrapped up. Plus, Box play teaches kids spatial awareness, which is the understanding of your body in space. Spatial awareness is so important for all movement, but also for social skills. Cardboard boxes give kids a lot of power. It's like a whole room that they can do whatever they want with. When kids imagine a box into different things or move it from one place to another, they develop independence. They feel powerful and learn that they can do things and solve problems by themselves. Good job! Can you give me five? Give me five, you did it! <laughs> a box is basic. No batteries, no sound effects. 100% of the play comes from the kid's imagination. That means that cardboard boxes are imagination superchargers. Beep, beep. Good driving. You'll be amazed at what kids see in a simple cardboard box. It can be a spaceship, a house, a cave, a bus, or even a drive through restaurant. It's a great art opportunity too. Kids love to color and transform boxes. So save those boxes. A cardboard box is many toys in one, and it's a great boost for growing minds and bodies. Help us and other Mother Goose Club families by sharing how your kids play with boxes. Just hashtag pictures and videos with Mother Goose Club 
and type your play tips into the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to be the first to hear about new videos. Thanks for watching and happy playing. Bye bye. Say bye bye. Bye bye. Cardboard <laughs> box. Cardboard. And let your kids. T <laughs> Boxes, oh, they did well. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about cardboard boxes. <laughs> it can be a spaceship. I need water, y'all. And other Mother Goose Club. <laughs> or comment or type your play tips. Type your play tips. <laughs> or type your comment. <laughs> or type your play tips in the comments section. Oh. <laughs> It's a great art opportunity too. Arf, 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 arf. Imagination. Slip up, arf, arf. <laughs> and this is the parents' happy dance for no batteries and no sound effects. <laughs>
two, three, four, five. Good job, guys. Now, with a wooden spoon, we stir everything together until it's mostly mixed up. Good job. Phoebe, do you want to try? Yeah. Okay. Good job, Kira. Nice. It sounds bubbly. It does sound bubbly, doesn't it? Now we keep stirring until most of the lumps are gone. It already smells like Play-Doh. It does smell like Play-Doh. Once the mixture looks smooth, we put the pan on the stove over medium heat and continue stirring the mixture while it's heating. To be safe, I do the cooking part, but I make sure to show Phoebe and Kira what's happening in the pan as the mixture starts to change because it's a neat process to watch. After a couple of minutes, you'll start to see solid clumps forming in the pan. Continue to stir these clumps together until they form one giant doughy mass. It happens pretty quickly. Hey guys, come look at this. See, it's starting to look like dough. Once your dough looks like this, turn off the heat and take your pan over to the counter and dump the dough onto a plate. Now the dough is very warm, so I'm gonna let it cool for a few minutes until it's cool enough to handle. Now just knead the warm dough until it feels mixed up. Do you guys wanna try? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go for it. What does that feel like, Kira? It feels like sticky ice cream. Sticky ice cream, what do you think, Phoebe? I think it feels like melted ice cream. Like melted ice cream, yeah. Does it feel mixed up? Yeah. yeah. All right. And that's it. Let's add the glitter to make it sparkly. You got it. What color should we use? Pink. Pink? I like that idea. All right. So we just make a dent in the middle, like this. And then we add glitter. Like that. And then just knead it until it's spread throughout. See, wasn't that easy? I love being able to make any color we want. Me too. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> what does it feel like? It feels like squishy dough. Squishy dough. I like to go like this. I'm yeah. glad we went with the blue. The blue is a pretty color. It is a pretty color. With pink sparkles. I like to poke it. Poke, 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 poke. I'm gonna stick it. Yeah. I'm gonna try and make a snail. If you store your dough in a plastic baggie or airtight container, it will keep for several months. Help us and other Mother Goose Club families learn by showing us how you and your kids did this project. We love to hear from you. So hashtag pictures and videos with Mother Goose Club and type stories into the comment section below. And also, don't forget to subscribe to be the first to hear about new videos. Bye! Bye. And... Bye! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no! No! <laughs> Cute. Hey. Other Mother Goose Club is kind of tongue twister. <laughs>
and you can add things like the eyes and the nose and the mouth and create your own shape monster. Are you ready? Yeah! Okay, here we go. To create your shape monster, have your child choose what shapes they want to use. Now if you have a little one that might have a hard time using the scissors to cut out shapes, you could cut them out for them and have them sitting out already for them on the table. But if you have an older child that may have a lot of fun choosing what shapes they want to use, they can cut them out themselves. Once they choose their shapes, they can create their own shape monster. And you might end up with something like this. All right, so there's triangle. Triangle! All right, there's circles. Triangle. Oh, for the nose. And, uh, what are you gonna make, Rach? What shape are you using? I need a black piece of paper. Oh, here's some. I'm gonna use Silas I like his nose. I'm gonna use two white pieces. That's eyes. eyes. Anything good. All right, what else do I need? use for the mouth? Hmm. I know what I can do. What do you want? You need me to reach them for you? No. You got it? A one of these. <gasps> oh, Silas, I like that. Is it like what a big I mouth did. frog? I got two eyes. Uh, Silas had so much fun as he got to choose what shape he put on his shape monster. He was running around the table. He even got to use scissors, which is a really big deal for a four-year-old. I need to cut this. Can I cut it? Yes, you may. This way. You're doing great. Oh yeah, that looks happy. Or you can use yeah, and this looks sad. Yeah, black. It does look kind of sad, doesn't it? And then you can make white. Do you want it sad or happy? Happy. I'm trying not to look. It's so tempting. Can I look? Can I Not yet. I'll tell you his Open. mouth. <gasps> wow, look at all those circles you added. I like it. This is gonna be that one can I hmm. Building a shape monster gave my kids independence as they chose what shapes they used. Also, as I asked them questions, I think it gave them confidence because they knew how to answer those questions. So Rachel, you chose a pentagon. Tell me how many sides does a pentagon have? Five sides. Good job, five sides. And if there wasn't something they knew, I could just help them through it. I don't know, I bought smaller teeth. Oh. I still don't want. You could cut them smaller. Look, use that triangle, and you can go ahead and cut, yeah. Oh. There you go. Open. Benjamin, what are you working on over there? Are you working on eyeballs? No, the mouth. The I'm mouth? I'm only doing one eye. Oh. A one-eyed monster. Wait. Look, brother did a one-eyed monster. They got to learn about shapes, but also get to use their hands building it. So it really connected the mind with the body as they learned. Well, let's feet. add some feet. <gasps> what do you think? A feet for this. Now, what shape is this? A what tangle? A rectangle. Right oh, we need to cut two and put them right there. Now, let's see. What else could we add to your heart? I need hands. Some hands. What are you going to use for his hands? What shape? And more rectangles. More rectangles. Awesome. What? Woo! You lost your shape. It was really sweet to see Benjamin give his shape monster to Silas. That really melted my mama heart. Let me see. He's giving it's you a his shape to number block oh, Benjamin, that's wonderful. Your favorite number, 100. My husband has one eye. What do you, yes, what do you say to brother? <laughs> Look at my kitty monster. I love it, Rachel. Next, we're doing a really fun game I like to call Feed the Hungry Shape Monster. The kids get to have a scavenger hunt where they find the shapes and then they get to put the shape that corresponds into the hungry monster's mouth. Now, do you see something in this room that's different that has never been here before? Those. Yes. They're neat, aren't and they? Those. And those, yes. Well, these guys over here, you know how we made monsters earlier? Well, these monsters are hungry monsters. And do you see their shapes? Yes. Okay, what shapes do you see? Mm -hmm. Um, rectangle, circle, square, and triangle. Okay, well, Mama has hidden shapes all around this room. You're gonna find the shapes, and after we find them, we're gonna feed them. We're gonna put them in the bowl. We're gonna feed the hungry monsters. Whoa. 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 On the count of three. One, two, three, go! Go find them! Chop, chop, chop! Feed them, feed them, guys! Feed them, feed them at the very end or now? There's more shapes! Oh, careful, Bench. There you go! Yay! Yay! Go feed him! I found one! Rachel found one! Let's come here. A circle and a rectangle. That was so cool! A circle! Where's the circle monster? I think. Is it you? No? Is it you? No? Is it you? Oh, nobody wants the circles. Hmm. Hmm, who wants a 
green square. Let's see, is it you? <laughs> <laughs> is it you? Ooh, yeah! Blue rectangle. Who has who's hungry for the rectangle? No, 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 no. Who wants to do triangle? <laughs> <laughs> I think this activity went really, really well. My kids got to learn and have fun. They also got to have a great scavenger hunt and find the shapes. And who doesn't want to feed a hungry shape monster? It was a really fun activity for me and for the kids. Mother Goose Club Playhouse.